Good morning, everyone. I'm so pleased that you have taken the time to join with us today as we worship God together. We continue to feel the impact of coronavirus. Many face the future with uncertainty. But we remember today that our God has a big heart. He is the God of all comfort, who is able to comfort us in all our distress. And in our passage from the letter of John today, we are also reminded that he calls us his people to show that love in practical ways to others. We turn now to lift up our voices to God in praise. We're going to sing two pieces, The Church is Wherever, and then The Lion and the Lamb.
I would like you all to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in being able to offer our prayers to you on this lovely Sunday morning. Your love for us is evident everywhere we look. From the first glimpse of sunlight seeping through our curtains each morning, the glorious sounds of songbirds greeting us at the dawn of each day, and the vibrant colours of nature clothed in her full glory at this wonderful time of year. We offer our thanks to you for all you have provided us with during this past week. You have met our every need, and with a thankful heart we praise you for your goodness. Lord, we confess that we have not always returned your love, but have turned away to do what we wanted to do and not what you required of us. Lord, we are by our very nature sinful. Forgive us and help us through the power of the Holy Spirit to carry out your will. We ask for the guidance, strength and boldness to step out into a new week, invigorated by your word and the knowledge that you love us with a love that transcends any other relationship we will ever have. On Calvary's cross, you let your only son suffer and die because of your love to suffer and die to save us from our sins. We know that this sacrifice demands more than confessing our love with our lips. It demands our all. And the way we live, the choices we make, and the way we treat others should in some small measure reflect your great love for us. Help us, Lord, to be active, not passive Christians, no matter what age or stage in life we find ourselves in. May our love in action show to others how much our relationship with you means to us. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 10 to 18. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. 
And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. At the beginning of the lockdown, some of the churches in Newton Ards got together to see if there were ways in which we could support people in need in the wider community and to show Christ's love to them in a practical way. Raymond is our representative on that group and he's going to share with us now something of its work. Earlier this year, I was invited to meetings hosted by Diane Holt at The Link uh, to discuss how churches in Newton Arts uh, could work together to begin to address real problems in our local community, such as mental health, uh, unemployment and financial difficulties. It was obvious to us that any initiative needed to reach out well beyond the church gates and into areas of society um, unfamiliar to some of those present. I think we managed um, just two meetings uh, before the coronavirus emerged and lockdown was imposed. Fortunately, technology uh, came to our rescue and we were able to remain in contact through email and by online discussions using WhatsApp. The coronavirus crisis gave us the opportunity to try to practice what we preach. At least 14 churches throughout the Newton Arts area are participating, representing a broad spectrum of Christian denominations. The group, ably led by Diane, has been quickly able to respond to help the vulnerable and isolated using elements of community support already in place, and also by quickly developing new ones. In this way, we were able to assist the North Down and Ards Council in responding to the crisis. The group organised the distribution of approximately 14,000 leaflets uh, to addresses in the Newton Ards area. They gave phone numbers and email addresses for people to use if they needed, for example, help with shopping, uh, a prescription collected, a food parcel, someone to pray with, or indeed just a friendly chat. There were also details of how to access other services provided by the churches and their associates, including the food bank, uh, furniture and clothes, Lifeline, the Samaritans and St Vincent de Paul. Additionally, uh, a Just Giving page on social media has been organised by the joint churches in response to COVID-19. Now, I have had the privilege of being part of the response to this crisis and delivering food parcels, and I've seen it firsthand, the practical Christianity of those working at the food bank, on telephone support, and in cooking and delivering meals to the vulnerable and the isolated. When I've had to deal with an issue I was unsure of, there have always been other more experienced members of the team uh, that have provided support. I also know that there are those within my own congregation willing to step up and support the initiatives if required. They are fulfilling the command to love one another as I have loved you. Hello boys and girls, hey guys, I hope you're all really well and I hope you're all been enjoying the sun. Um, I've come to talk to you guys today, but before we start, I thought we could play a game of do this, do that. What about that? So everybody, let's get on your feet and we'll have a wee quick game of do this, do that. 
Okay, boys and girls, so are we ready to go? So, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. Oof, here we go, okay? Are you ready again? So, do this, 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 do that. Oof, I think I'm pretty good at this. Right, ready? Do this, do this, do this, do this. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. Oh, I think I might have got some of you guys out. So that game is all about following um, the leader, following what I say. And so in today's story, we're going to be looking a wee bit about the idea of following someone and who we should be following. So you want to sit back down again, we'll get on with our story. So today's story, we are going to be looking at Cain and Abel. Now, I've got my Bible with me and we find the story of Cain and Abel in the book of Genesis and we look at it in chapter 4. So Cain and Abel, they were the sons of Adam and Eve. And Abel, he worked with the flocks. And Cain, he worked in the soil, he worked at the soil so he made like the fruit and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. And it talks about in, in this story about how Cain and Abel brought offerings or sacrifices to, to bring glory to God. So they brought them before God. And it says that Cain, well, he brought um, fruit from the soil. So things that he'd grown. And then it says that Abel, he brought um, fat portions of some of the firstborn from his flock. So it was like the best sheep or the best cows that he had. He brought them to God. And it says in the book of Hebrews that by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. And you see, God delighted in Abel's offering. He thought it was great. But this made Cain really angry because God didn't desire and love Cain's um, offering as he did Abel's. And then the Lord spoke, see, the Lord spoke to then Cain and he said, Cain, why have you got so angry? You've got to be really careful because sin is crouching at your door. You've got to be really careful what you do with this anger. But Cain didn't listen. And the next day, Cain said to Abel, let's go into the fields. And his, with his anger all welling up inside of him. And he attacked Abel and killed him. Cain let that his anger get the better of him. And then what happened next was God said, where is your brother? And Cain lied and he said, I, I don't know. Am I meant to know where my brother is all the time? But God knew what, or what Cain had done to Abel. God knew that Cain had killed him. And God said, what? What have you done to your brother? And God punished him. He threw him out into the lands and he had to work really hard um, to, to, to gain crops and to gain food. And Cain said, it may as well be dead. I'd be better off if I was. Some Bible stories we learn about, and we think, why are we learning about that story? It's, it's, not, very, it's not very nice. It's actually quite a sad story. Why is that in the Bible? But you see, the Bible's not full of, of stories about perfect people, but it's about real people, real people like us, who do things that are wrong, who make mistakes. And see, we learn about these stories so that we learn not to follow um, our own ways or, or Cain's ways. Because Cain didn't listen to God when he said that sin was crouching at his door. And he wasn't careful. And he didn't ask God for help. But instead, he went out and he hurt his brother and killed him. You see, we, instead of doing that, we should follow Jesus' ways, God's ways. Because I just mentioned his name. But who's the one person who is perfect and good and who we should follow? What's his name? Yes, it's Jesus. We should be following Jesus' ways. And in the Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Jesus says um, lots of times how we should follow him. And the one example is in John 8. And it says this in verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
You see, when we follow Jesus, he leads us down the right path that leads us closer to God. And, you know, we know that sometimes it isn't easy to follow Jesus, especially when our friends and maybe family members are doing things that we know Jesus wouldn't want us to do. But they look quite fun and we kind of want to join in. But you see, that's the good thing about Jesus. Jesus knows it's hard and he wants to help us. And he did this by when he died on the cross, he defeated sin and death. So that we didn't have to fight by ourselves, but he gave us the strength and the power to fight sin. And that means that when we're also stuck and we find it hard to follow Jesus, that we can, we can pray to God and ask him for help and he will help us. And we can read his word and learn from it and that'll help us lead us down the right path. And that will one, help us to live in a closer relationship with God, but it'll also help us to show other people who God is. And they'll probably want to live in God's way as well and follow Jesus. So I hope uh, you guys have found the story today helpful and you've learned something from it. It's been so lovely to share God's word with you. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully get chatting to you guys soon. Okay, see you later guys. In this next video, Johnny interviews a young woman who is studying agriculture at university. She is able to complete her education because she is being sponsored by Care for Cambodia and their partners Educate. Her aim is not only to improve her own life, but to take her knowledge back to the villages and improve the lives of the people there. Nhưng khi em chung mùa xong niếng, mình là dụng một pay pi chân nắm. 
sau thế ngay khi ông sắc xa nơi sài gòn vì chơi bia bảy hay thằng này cả sĩ cám nên khi ông rồi nơi khung cầm cửa xa miền sài gòn chợ chấm luôn pram nè miền ở bậc mặt đáy bóng pro lục dễ hay những lúc khi ông sum nay you study agriculture at university why did you decide to study this subject một hai đại khi nhôm chơi hơi hơi một buổi chiều cả sáng một sự xa đại xa ta tìm mối cứ nhôm giờ lại nhai tí pí cứ khi nhôm chọn khai chi kêu huấn luyện ở buổi nẹp phum hay chọn ngày kê đăng pí cả sáng cắm bộ thay áp lực ở bộ kê thơi cả sáng cắm kê thơi bàn tay vì ăn miên một chìm điện ăn miên ở cái hà thà và chạy cái té sản phẩm thơ vía còn chạy thật thơ thơ tam bài krusa bảo quản nên khi ông riêng nâng nên khi ông chọn từ bằng hạt bằng riêng cơ tam bài bảo chạy cái tay ở quạt thơ ở miền cà ri chùm ra từ một. Something I want to ask you about your life. I know life hasn't always been easy for you. Can you tell me about some of the difficulties you met in the past few years in your life? Bị mất máu sự bị bao nhiêu thằng mà đại tai bể đã một đòn thẹn tì đập pi lên chập liếm nên khi nhôm có miên chúng người bè đông đại nhọp hay bè nông khi nhôm lại liên ban này hay khi nhôm từ tu à rồi bà con ở stepping stone để chạy về pi chín năm tại để xa tới sở cấp hiệp từ từ cái đại sponsor hay nó bè đông nên khi nhôm chia pi chúng người mình chia đại vậy tôi nên khi nhôm school bị chọn như vậy, tôi quật bạp ơi, tôi ở, tôi sum phe nó phải nằm bên, bên này để tôi nên khi nhôm miền chúng người đang tích tụi, hay nên khi nhôm bồ lan tại để bay sum rạch nó cộm nó nên khi nhôm có, tôi thấy ở, tại anh vẫn không để cho bay, để xa tại trường điện ban pi chín năm mới, tôi có cái tháng bài chị cái cái thai dương miền sài gòn phía bên riêng tàu ai kia chui mua bánh tẹt ăn rừng khơi mày thưa mày chi riêng tàu hay có tập làm mua bánh lưu chiếu thang ban chụp cháy có số bài chật tạm đừng I know this is difficult but can I ask you to compare how you feel when you stop studying after you when you were sick and then Compare that with how you felt whenever you received the scholarship through Educate to continue your your university education. Nó về nâng cửa rắm cứ ăn ăn chỉ bán cứ nhâm sáu bài trận mình tên hay nó về đại cây khoan mò thà nhâm chóp cứ về nâng nhâm bổng thừa là tam phái hay nhâm chăm ăn thà nhâm sậy cái lăng mình tên hay để từng ao kia mưa bổng nhâm chăng ao mình tên hay về nâng nhâm ăn khò từ su mật phe thà chóp ăn tại cái thằng cho có sáu giờ đại chúng nó mới phải đam tai à rắm bao giờ bay chân hay chui làm lấy tục bao mật phải không ở những cái thằng ở vía mày giang mà nẹt đại tai kê pê tư thằng nó vía pleasure với chàng ai vợ bạn hay ở miền cùng nghiệp bờ sơn ta thằng nó bờ sơn đại dương ở tới cứ kê thả ở dương hay pê đại chư cứ kê ở ở sâu vô chân tự đạm hơi dương này tai thằng đấy cứ cái chụp bôi chia cái xu nhom là hột bị bệnh hai chục người hay thôi nhom miền nào rồng thang khôn ấy cứ ắt chẳng nghĩ hả ắt 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 phải giàu vậy từ từ to xu hay về để chư cứ riêng răng bưng khôn ấy như hay tại từ xa bị chừng người bỏ khôn ấy như hay à rồng cứ khó khăn nhiều vì cái này nó đạt mà do you have a message for your donors and educate who provide the money for you to get your scholarship to study? Nhiều miền bị bệnh, à lớn nhiều miền đây thông đông mê cao bị bị thà ở con, ta đông cha chồng nuôi hay có ở con đó bu cho ní, hay là phê dịu và quạt chia để tay để chui nhom, bu quạt đôi chỉ spin là bây giờ lòng nhom chân, bị spin, bị spin thì mũi cứ chia là cho ní hay spin thì bị cứ mà cha chồng nuôi để chui chồng lòng khi nhom hay ở ốp bát xạ cái lòng màu hay có chun bò ở bộ quạt miền sầu của phía bờ ó sầm nang là ó 
hay rô ở với cô và cô đời chụp chơi à con à con Love, love changes everything Hands and faces, earth and sky Love, love changes everything How you live and how you die Love can make the summer fly For a night seem like a lifetime Yes, love, love changes everything Now I tremble at your name Nothing in the world will ever be the same You probably recognize both the song and the singer. It is Love Changes Everything and it is particularly associated with Michael Ball. The song comes from a lesser known Andrew Lloyd Webber musical called Aspects of Love. It tells of the transforming power of love. It can make a big, strong, fearless man go weak at the knees at the sight of a slip of a girl, a teenage boy who previously had little interest in his appearance, now spends an inordinate amount of time in the bathroom preparing for a date. A mother gladly gives a kidney to her son who would otherwise die without the transplant. A doctor gives her life to serve people in a remote part of a third world country rather than enjoy a comfortable life at home. Love has the power to change us and how we view the world. This is particularly the case when it comes to the love of God. When we open our hearts to that love, freely offered to us in Jesus, we cannot remain the same. It changes everything. This is the theme of the verses we read today from 1 John chapter 3. Verse 10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God. Neither is anyone who does not love his brother. This verse acts as a bridge. It links John's previous teaching with what he is about to say. He is thinking about those things that should distinguish the Christian from those who have not surrendered their lives to Jesus. Last week we looked again at the moral test. The Christian is someone who lives to please Jesus. We want to do what he says. This week we turn to another hallmark of the faith. The social test. Verse 11. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Love stands at the heart of the Christian faith. We are loved unconditionally by God. We now have God's spirit within us. This expresses itself in love for one another. And this isn't simply a reference to Christians in general. There's a sense in which it's easy to love other believers with whom we have little or no contact or with whom we have much in common. This is primarily a reference to Christians in our own church family. Those who don't think as we do, who rub us up the wrong way, who irritate us and who we find difficult to like. As much as we would like to avoid them, we can't. They're part of the family. 
and are present at family gatherings. You're familiar with the saying, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. This applies equally to the Christian family. We don't choose our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we are called to love one another. It's a calling we often don't take as seriously as we should. Yet it is by our love for those fellow believers for whom we don't have a natural affinity, we demonstrate the reality of our faith. To drive home the importance of this matter, John contrasts Cain with Jesus. Cain mur murdered his brother Abel. He was motivated by jealousy. He was angry because God accepted his brother's offering while refusing his. His actions showed that his heart didn't belong to God. The apostle then issues this warning in verse 15. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. Our commitment to Christ will bring us into conflict with those who don't share our faith. They don't understand why we can't accept some of their values and standards of behavior. They interpret our refusal to compromise as intransigence and react negatively towards us. You may have faced such a response from family members, colleagues and associates. The rejection can be painful, but this is the lot of the believer. Those who don't belong to him can't appreciate why our loyalty to him trumps all other loyalties in life. We are not to be like Cain. We demonstrate the reality of our faith. We have passed from death to life by our love for our fellow Christians. John couldn't be any clearer on this matter when he declares anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. He is simply echoing the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. There must be no place for nursing anger or resentment or bitterness in the heart of the believer because they damage our relationships and drive love from our hearts. Instead, the love of God is meant to overcome all those barriers that normally would divide us from other people, whether it be class or creed or color or culture or country. Jesus unites those who would previously have been divided. During the Troubles, Republican and Loyalist prisoners were held in Longkesh. They had to be housed in different blocks because their animosity towards one another would have led to violence if they shared the same space. During that time, prisoners from both sides came into a living faith in Jesus. It transformed their attitudes towards one another. Those who were separated now we're able to come together to worship and to pray. We might wonder, how was such a thing possible? Did they change their politics? Probably not. What made it possible was that their loyalty to Jesus trumped all other loyalties. It was their common love for Jesus that united them. It also, as John said it would, cause trouble for them with their comrades. They thought them disloyal for having anything to do with the other side. John now turns our attention to Jesus. All too often, we interpret love as the absence of hatred. As long as we are not guilty of hate, we feel that we are obeying Jesus' command to love 
one another. But this is far from the truth. To refrain from hate is part of the command, but the lesser part, the greater part, is to actively show love. Verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. We are to love as Jesus loved, sacrificially. You may have already found John's words uncomfortable. But the introduction of the example of Jesus has left you bewildered. What are you to do with those feelings of anger and resentment towards another Christian who has hurt you? Or those feelings of antipathy towards a fellow believer with whom you have nothing in common and frankly can't stand? You readily identify with a young adult who was once part of a youth fellowship I helped lead. She was struggling with another girl in the group. She knew Jesus' command to love. But in exasperation, she said to me, Love her? I don't even like her. And this is a common mistake many believers make. We think in order to love someone, we must first like them. This is not the case. Love in the Bible is not first and foremost an emotion, but a choice. It's the determination to do another person good. When you read the great description of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what immediately strikes you is the absence of any reference to emotions. Love is defined in terms of our attitudes and actions towards another person. And this is actually quite liberating. Our love for a person doesn't depend on any worth in them, which is the reason we like someone. It is freely given. Neither does it depend on how they treat us. It is easy to love those who love us. We love regardless of how people treat us because we want to reflect Jesus in our lives. And if we determine to love a person in this way, over a period of time, we will find those negative feelings we have towards them quietly disappearing. But I want to add very quickly that we are not capable of this kind of love in our own strength. We can only love in this way as we allow Jesus' love to fill our hearts, as we look to him day by day to enable us to love as he loved. And what should be obvious is that this love is not about fine words and sentiments, but it shows itself in deeds. John gives us this practical example in verse 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. We have shown you some of the ways that we, as a congregation, are seeking to fulfill Jesus' command, both at home and abroad. It's only possible through your support. We want to love sacrificially as he did, not looking for anything in return, but purely out of the desire to do others good and to show Jesus love to them. John is showing us how as a company of his people we demonstrate the reality of our faith by our love for one another. 
I wonder how seriously we take his words. Or do we simply dismiss them as unrealistic, nice in theory, but totally impractical? We need to remember, Jesus never asks of us what he does not equip us to do. Sadly, many congregations are better known for their lack of love than for their practice of it. What a difference it would make to our congregational life if we took his words to love one another to heart. It would change not only the way we talk to one another, but how we talk about one another. It would affect not just how we act towards one another, but how we react to one another. It would change the very way we think about one another. What a witness it would be to Jesus if this community could say of the people of First Arts, see how these Christians love one another. Let's join together to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing love for us. That love that expressed itself in the giving of Jesus to die in the, on the cross in our place. And we pray that his love would fill our lives and overflow into all our relationships. We pray in particular that you would teach us to love one another as the family of God in First Newton Lords. And we ask that it mightn't just be about words and sentiments, but that it would be a genuine love expressed in our attitudes and our actions towards one another. Help us where we are holding on to anger or resentment or bitterness. Give us the strength to love those whom we don't naturally like. And we pray that as a company of your people, that we could be a community of love witnessing to that great love that you have shown to us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn now to sing our last hymn. And it's a hymn that takes up this theme of love in action. Beauty for brokenness. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cures for their ills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak, voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, 
Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Cross for the pain, God of the poor, friend of the weak. Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, a future and dreams. Lord, in our madness, carelessness, greed, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor. Till your justice burns brightly again. Until the nations learn of your ways, seek your salvation and bring you their praise. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. We Tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. We pray. Melt our cold hearts. The tears fall like rain. Come change. Your love from a spark to a flame. Could I encourage you to say the grace along with me? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.